Last time we shot on this layout, someone commented, you copied Linus, he has a tool pegboard. Well, yes, we're back in this layout. In fact, Linus did invent these. And now we are back to fix the Cooler Master H500P. This is part two in our series, fixing the Cooler Master H500P, wherein we attempt to fix the Cooler Master H500P. Before getting to that, this content is brought to you by the Thermaltake Flow RGB closed loop liquid cooler, which is a 360 millimeter radiator plus three 120 fans that are RGB illuminated. The Thermaltake ring fans at that. This is a 4.5 gen Azatec pump, which is one of the faster pumps. You can learn more at the link in the description below. This is the case. You might observe that it presently has tape all over it. That's from part one where we tried two things. Uh, primarily spacing out the distance from the back of the panel to the front of the case to better allow airflow through the mesh on the side intakes and also fix the problem where it comes off the front because it doesn't anymore. So uh, we're going to cut this and then my plan is to meshify the CMH500P by adding some mesh to it. So we've got a couple different options here. Here's one from the C700P, which we actually reviewed somewhat positively. Just want to make sure Cooler Master remembers that so they don't hate me eternally for this one. And we have this mesh from, I think, a fractal or a thermal take case. And we have this one from the C700P. So we're going to try those out. Okay, so step one of this mod is cut open the tape because we no longer need that on there. So we're going to do that and then start digging into the actual, get the plastic off the panel and see if we can fix everything. All right, there's part one. Back to where we started. That would look kind of good. Um, it doesn't stretch all the way down to the bottom. You can see I'm about one to two inches off right here. So I think I can just put some electrical tape down there. It's not gonna be pretty, but it'll be functional and a proof of concept. That's about the right size, but it's got those flanges on the top. I could cut them off. So then for the top, I'm thinking, here's our top panel, the front oriented towards you guys. I'm thinking we do like knock this glass in and then that's too big, but let's, uh, let's start with the first one. So at this point we are entering territory of no return. How is this held in? So anyone remember this, that noise? Well, the reason that creaking noise exists and that cracking noise you just got is because this is secured by glue. In fact, me picking this thing up did that. Can you see that, the gap in here? So this, this was formed from what I just did. Picked it up. Uh, so yeah, I mean, the good news is that that means it's gonna be easy to split this apart and it might even be able to, to be restored after. Yeah, I was originally thinking, oh, we could just break it, but honestly, if it's just glue, oh, it's not glue, it's <laughs> It's literally double stick tape. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, here you go, I forgot about this. Patrick did most of the work on this case. Two screws right here. So we're gonna remove those two screws and I think that'll let us get access to the part that's holding it down. Is that the big one? There you go. Look, see, you could uh, you could clean the dust out. I don't know what everyone's talking about, no dust filters. That's totally a dust filter and completely reasonable to access for cleaning. I just need to turn this kind of. Oh man, if I can get this, I'd probably just leave that tape on there and reuse it. Oh, you know, right when I get the knife out, everything starts working. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, nice and easy. Didn't even break any of the plastic, which is surprising. So that folds under there. It's got a little foot on it and sets in and, uh, that's probably not salvageable thinking that comes off in pieces. So, um, we may need a, a new solution for that, but let's look at our options here. So I could put this like, 
Where's the bottom? Okay, bottom's towards me. So this just barely will fit. With I'll just put some electrical tape down the sides, I think. I mean, it's going to be on the inside. And because I'm not really touching much of the... I'm not even on the tape over here. So I think because of that, I'm going to end up doing just electrical tape on the sides. That'll hold it against the front. And then... You know, I'd love a longer one of these. I could take another one and cut it in pieces and bridge them, but it's not going to look that great. Not that this looks great anyway, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I think it'll be fine to just tape that bottom section off. It'll choke some cooling, granted, but uh, it's still you can't make it worse than stock. So how's that look? Uh, so if we wanted to call this mod early, I'd say that's done. We've done it. We fixed the airflow problems. Uh, it can breathe pretty well now. <laughs> um, that, that would drop temperature to 13 degrees Celsius. I'm not kidding you, we tested that. So that would be the real, the real mod. But let's say you've got kids or pets or things you don't want uh, exploring the 200 millimeter fans with their peripheral uh, limbs. Then maybe you want some filter. I need. Something like that. That's not bad. There it is pretty much finished. Not bad. It looks a lot closer to the half X than the H500P does. And it looks way closer to high airflow. So yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. We can see how it looks. And this is just with a mesh filter from like a fractal case or one of those. So there you go. That's pretty damn cool, man. That's like, that's exactly what I was imagining when I thought high airflow case from Cooler Master with 200 millimeter fans. Because here's the thing. As a general rule of thumb, you lose about 30% of pressure for every 90 degree turn you make. This being glass, you've only got two ways of entrance here and it's on either side of this. Technically, there's a little tiny bit up here, there's a little tiny bit down here, but ultimately the two sides are the main thing. And as we showed in our review, those sides are largely covered by these fans. And that means that, we took these off earlier, that means that you're really not getting a lot of airflow in there. So, uh, and only like this very outer edge of the blade is ever being used anyway, because it's clearly got no way to access air from the outside when there's glass in front of it. So all this inner part of the blade is just left unused. So I think we're gonna fix that and I wouldn't make a comment about how this panel's a bit fragile now because if you push the middle of it, the mesh will cave in. But honestly, it's not any more fragile than it was originally. So um, yeah, we're good with that one. That's done. I think the next step is to meshify the top panel. Sorry for the uh, creaky noises. Ah! Cooler Master trying to get me back. That should work for now. You may have heard uh, the phrase cut away from yourself. So I'm doing that. I'm cutting away from myself and towards the camera operator for maximum safety. All right, nice. Okay, so that's out. Next up, oh, not bad. You know, from the front, I think it'll look okay. <laughs> We're gonna want the back uh, towards the wall because this is a little like Batmobile, like sticking out at the end. But um, that's fine, I'll take it. I'll take it. We could do another mesh in there, I guess. I don't know, would that look better if, we did, if I found another one of these? What do you think? Oh, that's not bad. But it is the, the half mobile we've got now. So there's our top 
I mean, from the front, it'll be fine. From the side, it's not bad. A little bit of a blemish there, but... Okay, so this needs to come up a little bit. There we go. Got it. Nice. Old and new. There you have it. I'm pretty excited to see how the thermals do here. We've got it set up in our same original test system, so we can actually really easily validate the stock thermals and then rerun for this setup. And I think that should, uh, that should give us an idea for what this case could have been if Cooler Master properly made it a successor to the high airflow series. And honestly, it doesn't look half bad. I, I stole that from Paul, I'm sorry. It doesn't look half bad though, like seriously. Uh, <laughs> considering what a, like, a hack job approach this was and how it took us like half an hour or something, it's pretty damn good. And I think what happened here is Cooler Master probably fell for the glass trend. I think they were like, we gotta have glass everywhere on this thing. It looks good and it's popular and they're not wrong. But when you have 200 millimeter fans, why? Like this is the whole point of the case is those fans, make them breathe. So yeah, uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll test it, see how it does. So here it is. This is the Meshified H500P from us, I guess. Uh, we're not gonna sell it fractal. So no, we're not touching your Meshify name. I think they have rights to that, but that's what it's kind of loosely named that. So we've got the, the front panel is, is still the mesh version, tested it all and basically fixed the thermal problems. So the thermal issue is that Cooler Master had with the original version of the case uh, have largely been resolved. The top panel, you'll notice that we actually restored it back to the acrylic panel and there's a reason for that. We'll show it in the charts. Uh, it largely has to do with static pressure of those front fans. And we've got some noise tests as well. Quick note, the testing here is not comparable to our original review. It is comparable to our radiator testing that we just posted at time of this going live yesterday, but not to the original review. We've changed the way, changed the software we're using to monitor, changed the testing method, and changed uh, the averaging method for the data, just specifically for this because some of the numbers were close enough that we needed better test resolution. So I went through and fixed some of that stuff to improve it. And we've got the numbers for you that we can go through now. First, a very quick look at noise levels. We've got the original H500P highlighted and the new Meshified GN version of that. The original was 38.7 dBA in the test. Not particularly quiet, but not awful either. With the mesh front and with the mesh top, so not the acrylic top, we're at about 40 dBA, so we've increased by 1.5-ish decibels. Not too bad, really, considering we took out the panel and replaced it with mesh, so that just really speaks to where the noise is escaping on this case. Our thermal chart is flanked by stock configurations defining our bounding boxes for the mesh mod. In the worst case, the stock configuration, we're at 64.5 degrees Celsius over ambient for CPU load temperature or 53.4 C for GPU temperature. Removing the front panel gets us down to 54.3 degrees Celsius for the CPU and 48.5 C for the GPU. This marks a maximum improvement of about 10 degrees on the CPU or about five degrees on the GPU. If we can get close to this with our mesh mod, we're doing pretty well. This is the maximum performance we'd be able to get. For the completely meshified H500P with both the front and top panel converted to mesh, we end up at 57.9 degrees on the CPU and 48.8 on the GPU. This isn't particularly exciting, marking only a 6.6 .6 degree improvement in CPU thermals or 4.6 on the GPU. Not bad and certainly better and puts us in the range of higher end cases, but really not that exciting. So looking into this problem, the panel we had on there originally was this one, the mesh one that we replaced it with. And the front of it's over here, waving a hand over the front of this mesh, right around this area, you could feel a lot of the cool air escaping the case. And that comes down to basically pressure. The fans just, they're, they don't spin very fast. They don't have very high uh, performance for static pressure. And so you end up with a lot of that air just kind of drafting up and out of the mesh when it's on the top. So replacing it with the acrylic panel actually 
kept most of that air in the case. It gets pulled through the CPU cooler a lot better. The CPU cooler can leverage its own fan pressure to suck that air in, and we can look at those numbers too. The result was noteworthy. Our CPU is now at 56.1 degrees for about a two degree reduction. The GPU thermals are roughly the same though, at 49.3 versus 48.8. This is within our test resolution and makes sense since removing that top panel or changing it or anything like that is really going to impact the CPU primarily. We are now within a couple degrees of completely removing the front panel at all, but have a solution for dust and visuals. Not a bad trade. So that's it for this one. Cooler Master did send out one of their reps, sent a tweet in response to my teaser of this, where they said something along the lines of they're listening to the audience and plan to have things in the future, which I basically translated in my head to mean we're going to be selling mesh panels in the future as DLC. So it may be the option that uh, with the H500P going forward, there'll be alternatives out there. Maybe they'll have a mesh version or maybe they'll just have panels sold separately. But for now, what I can tell you is you can do this mod yourself for a few bucks, like electrical tape on the inside. Uh, you grab a mesh panel or a dust filter like this one, just on Newegg or Amazon for 10 bucks and make sure it's the right size, throw it on there, you'd be good to go. Now, it's uh, probably a little bit more of a hack job than what Cooler Master would do, but I mean, probably not that much more of a hack job than what they would do because the bar is pretty low for these panels. So um, I don't know, if, if they end up selling something that's like a, a standalone pack of accessories rather than a completely separate mesh case, and that pack ends up being like 50 bucks for two panels, I'd say just do it yourself for less than, definitely less than 20 in the US anyway, and call it a day. But yeah, um, in the very least, this shows the true potential of the case when it's not obstructed with acrylic. So it looks pretty good in those conditions in terms of both thermals and visuals. Noise isn't bad. And uh, yeah, kind of a, a fun project. So as always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamers next. This helps out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to get a shirt like this one or the shirt that was in the first half of the video. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.